It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant. In March of 2001, Ned Darty launched this book called Fast Lane to Heaven, uh, an interesting book. And when we uh, went over the book, there was a lot of interesting things that he had written in his book. Ned Darty was a big player. Uh, when he was 35, 36, 37 years old, this guy lived the life of Riley you can't believe. The drugs, the sh champagne, private jets, owned uh, one of the most popular uh, nightclubs in the Hamptons, Club Marrakesh. Uh, people would stand in line, pay $25, $50, $100 just to get into it. Just lived the life of Riley. Didn't have any fate, didn't believe there was a hereafter. In fact, one of his slogans was, he who dies with the most toys wins, and believe me, he had the most toys. Uh, this guy had girlfriends, you name it, he did everything in the book. Then something happened to him. Uh, he had a, an experience, uh, and from that point, uh, we'll let Ned himself talk about it. Ned, it's nice to have you on the show again. Uh, thanks. It's good to be back in Hazleton, Sam. Um, the book, you know, when you launched this book, uh, you launched it off with Flash Lane to Heaven. It was in March of 2001. Now, keep the date in mind, 2001. And today, uh, we're launching uh, your uh, website, endtimesdaily.com, correct? That's right, Sam. Uh, the, the book Fast Lane to Heaven uh, was based on my two near-death experiences back in 1984. And as you know, I had many uh, visions of the future, of the future of the world, as, as well as my own future. And uh, uh, what's been happening in the last 10 years around the world, much of what was uh, uh, foreseen in that book has happened in the last 10 years. We're at a point now uh, in our history where um, things are happening so rapidly in the news, globally as well as nationally and spiritually, that uh, I have launched this website, endtimesdaily.com. It's going to be a 24-7 news site that people can access uh, where they can uh, get articles about national and global news, spiritual news, health and wellness news. Uh, but I will be uh, very hands-on with this website. And uh, frankly, what I intend to do is uh, to add more emphasis and details on the visions that I was shown about the future and to correlate them with current events that are going on, to try to explain, from my perspective, what's going on right now in the world. Okay, for those people who are watching the show, the Sam LaSanne Show, for the first time in different areas, because we're airing this show practically throughout three states. Um, Ned Darty, I mentioned a little bit about you lived the life of Riley, 35, 36, 37 years old. You just lived it all, champagne, women, drugs, sex, you know, it was... Uh, what happened at the age 37 that uh, was sort of changed your entire life? Well, in the evening of July 2nd, 1984, I was in an altercation in my nightclub in the Hamptons, and uh, I collapsed uh, outside the club. I was in respiratory and or cardiac arrest for approximately one hour and six minutes. And it was during that time that I had a very profound near-death experience. Uh, where I was shown many of the various stages of, of an NDE. Now, Sam, back then when I had this experience, that wasn't a household term. Now, uh, most of your viewers yes. uh, would know what a near-death experience yes. is. I had one of the most profound and deepest and, and uh, frankly, one of the most researched uh, experiences. And uh, as a result of that experience and the second experience I had on November 30th, 1984, uh, I began to write this book. I waited 10 years to write the book. Uh, frankly, I thought that people would think that I was crazy for what I was about to write in this book. Began writing it around 1994, 1995. And as, as you said, it was published in 2001. And in the book, I talked about the future of the world. Uh, and I was very reticent and even, frankly, uh, conservative in my description of what I saw for the future. Well, now in retrospect, Sam, uh, 10 years later, uh, practically all of the items that I, I was shown about the future has happened since then, and they were in the book 10 years ago. For example, you have a test you want to give me. Well, I, I, I thought, Sam, uh, you know, I've been on your show many times in the last 10 years, and, and you always used to question uh, all these things that I was shown. And back 10 years ago, at the beginning, 
uh, it seemed inconceivable. But uh, as, as you said, the book came out in March of 2001, and then we had September 11th in 2001. And in the book on page 252, one of those future vision, visions was a major terrorist attack would befall New York and Washington, D.C., severely impacting the way we lived in the United States. So right away, that gave the book a certain amount of credibility, but we still had all these other things that seemed inconceivable. The, the, the test I'd like to give you would be a quick true and false test of a number of the items that were in the book. So let's start with the first one, a rise of Middle Eastern terrorism, including the assassination of a leader of Israel. Did that happen? Yes. And it was in the book. Uh, an increase in the tax on the Catholic Church, on the Vatican, on, on Rome. Has that happened in the yes. last 10 years? Uh, terrorism would spread, not only from the Middle East, but through Europe, uh, the rest of the Far East. And this terrorism would not necessarily be only caused by terrorists, as we perceive them to be, but from very powerful and influential people and groups in the world that have yes. been behind the terrorism. Wars and rumors of wars would spread from the Middle East to the Far East, and including right up until today's news, we're hearing about an increase of wars and the potential for more war, not only more war, but the possibility of a World War III. Is that happening in the news? Yes. Right. The greatest threat to the United States would come from China. Yes. Very conceivable. As we already mentioned, a terrorist attack would befall New York and Washington, D.C. Now, the Western Hemisphere, 10 years ago I said, the Western Hemisphere would be plagued by natural disasters, freakish, erratic, and unseasonable weather patterns, for starters, yep. severe flooding and land erosions, tornadoes and winds, an increase in the, in the velocity of these tornadoes and the strength of them, severe record winters, we've been having them, correct? Record heat waves, we've been having them. Severe droughts, that's something that's coming, Sam. Uh, an increase in destructive storms and in the intensity of hurricanes. As you know, we've had these mega hurricanes. Katrina is the one that stands out most prominently. Mm -hmm. So that also fits in the category of true. All of these things have happened. Now, uh, we could go back two years ago, and this starts to make sense. The financial and banking institutions globally would collapse. We've already seen yep. what may be a prelude to potentially a much worse collapse that could be in the future. Part of the problem in the United States would be as a result of the national debt, the staggering national debt. When the book came out 10 years ago, that wasn't a problem. Potentially, I don't know if you can answer this true or false, if you think this would even be in the possibility of realm, that the United States could be thrown in political, economic, and financial chaos, similar to what's happened, for example, in Greece, in Ireland so far, mm -hmm. potentially in Portugal or Spain right now. The United States government will fail to meet its financial obligations, certainly a possibility from yes. what we hear. Now, this is the one that's most interesting now. I was talking about a new world order 10 years ago. 10 years ago, that wasn't in the news. In the last couple of years, you've heard about this new world order. Is that true, yes, Sam? Yes, Oh, yes. And also, what this new world order, uh, these global elitists, if you will, these power brokers uh, who are behind the scenes uh, conducting a shadowy government, if you will, not only in the United States, but in the European uh, Union, as well as in third world countries around the world. They're attempting to reorganize the world's financial systems. Have you been hearing about that? Absolutely. Right. Folks, I'm talking to Ned Darty. The book uh, is Fast Lane to Heaven. Uh, endtimesdaily.com, you can get this book. We have a lot more to talk about. For example, folks, uh, what's, what's happening today in, in our world, uh, the liberal media, um, family values being destroyed, attacks on people who are um, religious, um, the, uh, is Satan really at work here? And why are all these things happening? Have we been warned? Will more happen? Stay with us. 
staying with us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant. Remember, 24-7, ssptv.com. You can watch any of our shows, particularly the show I'm doing with author Ned Darty. If you remember, folks, um, for those of you watching the first time, I highly recommend go to endtimesdaily.com and you'll learn a lot about uh, Ned Arley, but particularly about the book he wrote, First Lane to Heaven. When he launched this book in March of 2001, a lot of visions he had. One vision that we want to talk about before I get into some other questions was the, the shifting of Earth's axis. Uh, right, Sam, and that's very interesting because uh, uh, the visions that I, that I saw that involved the shifting of the Earth's axis resulted in earthqu earthquakes and tsunamis. Um, in our recorded history, uh, we didn't have any shifting of the Earth's axis, although it's believed that thousands of years ago there were rather dramatic shifts in the Earth's axis. However, uh, in modern times, what we've had w was the Asian tsunami initially, and then the tsunami in Japan. And both of those tsunamis and earthquakes were associated with a shifting in the Earth's axis. We now have two events. Uh, involving a shifting of the Earth's axis. So, um, in conclusion, Sam, uh, I'd just like to say that 10 years ago, I was reticent, very conservative, about talking about these future events. Uh, but now, in retrospect, I see in the past 10 years, we've seen these events, one after another, happening. Uh, we have got geopolitical events, we've got geophysical events, and it's all leading us in one direction. Okay, so now let's go back to the reason. OK, um, we have today in our society, you lived it. You know, you're a young person. You know, you didn't have no time for God in your life. OK, uh, and it seems the way the world is going to, especially the United States is going, is um, they can, uh, the current liberals, whether they're whoever they are, extreme liberals, can't take God uh, out of our things fast enough. OK, destroying family values, as you see. And we have a, a nation today that's very, you know, very understanding, uh, and it's like, well, you do what you have to do. I don't want to interfere in anybody's religion or, or their lifestyle or, hey, if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, you know, uh, how, who are we to tell you how to live your life? Uh, you know, you want to have an abortion, you can have an abortion. Uh, this is America. This is free. It's a woman's body. Uh, and, you know, if we, you know, we want to take God out of, uh, you know, that's up to them. We'll do our own thing. Keep religion entirely separate from, you know, uh, uh, what, what's, what's happening in the country. Uh, um, uh, so your thoughts about that, Ned? Well, it, it, it comes down to something quite simply, Sam. Um, on a spiritual level, as, as well as on the level of the reality in which we live, this is really a battle of good versus evil. And uh, a lot of people, particularly in the media, want, want to take uh, exception to that and to be very critical of anybody who talks about good versus evil. Um, I've done a lot of research as a result of, first of all, the two near-death near experiences. And since then, a lot of the inspiration that's been coming to me particularly in the last 10 years. And my research has taken me back uh, historically um, to the foundations of pagan religions, the foundation of Christianity, uh, currently right up to modern times. And there were certain periods of time in our history, particularly in the 17 and 1800s, when uh, people of power and influence saw an opportunity to gain more, gain more power and control over the rest of us particularly through the central banking system. And uh, these are people, frankly, Sam, when you study their history in the background, many of them were involved in uh, satanic rituals, in uh, secret sects and societies. Uh, the one that comes to mind in particular was the foundation uh, of the Illuminati on May 1st, 1776. Uh, there's a, somewhat of a of a connection there because uh, the site endtimesdaily.com will officially launch on May 1st of this year, 2011. And one of the missions of the site is to point out the existence of this shadowy world government, if you will, that operates behind the lines. They're capable of not only influencing uh, for example, our presidential elections and elections of senators and sometimes even congressmen because they have so much power and money and influence they can literally determine 
who's allowed to be a Republican candidate, who's allowed to be a Democratic candidate. They have power and influence over the media, over energy, over our food sources, over banking, over insurance. Uh, we're talking about a, uh, a group of people that may globally uh, number, not in excess of, say, 4,000 people. And uh, through these various secret societies, the Trilateral Commission, for example, um, on April 8th to 11th in, uh, of uh, 2011, the Trilateral Commission met in Washington. You're talking about the most powerful people in the world and not one bit of information during the time period of April 8th to 11th came out about the fact that this meeting was being held. But what these people are doing is planning uh, our futures, uh, the futures of countries of the world, and what comes down to our own personal futures, in terms of their ability, particularly through the banking system, to exercise more power and control over people. It is a very evil influence, if you will. Uh, there's plenty of research that anyone can do uh, to even go back to see how many of these people are using Satan, or perhaps Satan is using them in order to influence his agenda. You know, there was a saying, Sam, that I heard for many years that Satan's greatest success was to convince us that he doesn't exist. I think today that's not necessarily true. Satan's greatest success is getting us to do his work when we don't even realize who our boss is. And I think that applies to a, a lot of people who are in power and influence. There are people at the top who are satanic. They're Illuminati. Uh, they see a dark energy, a dark power and control over other people, and they're exercising it. But there are people within these uh, corporate entities and these institutions who are frankly doing, doing Satan's work, but they don't realize who they're really working for. So the American public today, looking at this, you know, there are a lot of people, you know, thinking, you know, they have their own opinions. And like I said, most people just want to live their own lives. And they're, you know, therefore, they don't want to force their beliefs on some other people. <clears throat> There have been a number of letters to the editors written throughout the country. Um, those that get in, where people are specifically saying what you've been saying. We better start looking to pay more attention to God than what we have been. We better start paying attention to what's happening because he's telling us something and it's coming. Okay, uh, But you see, people are not aware of that. You never would think in a million years at the age of 37 when you were having your champagne and your, all the women you had and living the life of Raleigh, and you'd even think about what you were born and raised, uh, still are a Catholic, uh, those values went out the door. You didn't even think about those until you got hit, okay? And then someone said, hey, Ned Darty, you, we, got, we, we need to use you for a reason. We need a, you, know, you need to tell people what's going on. Some people are, uh, you know, get a little nervous about this, Ned. I've been preaching for years about me being pro-life, and I have, believe me, a lot of people who are well-educated, who are Catholic, okay, who will tell me, uh, Sam, you're you know, a little off the wall here. You know, hey, listen, you know, uh, the abortion is one thing, but look at the great things that these people are doing, and they separate, you know, what is morally right and morally wrong. So it's okay, but he's such a nice person, you know, uh, you know and this is what's happening. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, sort, of, um, sort of pitiful to a degree. Well, Sam, what people don't realize, uh, and this goes back to the early 1900s, uh, when, um, frankly, foreign banking uh, interest uh, took over control of the banking in the United States with the creation of the Federal Reserve System. Uh, to this day, most people are not aware that the, f that the Federal Reserve System is not federal. It has no reserves, and it operates exclusively for its private ownership to the detriment of the taxpayers of the United States of America. People still don't realize that, and they need to know that first of all. The same powerful people who took over the central banking system of the United States in the early 1920s, they acquired an ownership interest in approximately 25 of the largest newspapers in the United States. Now fast forward to today, 
there's approximately six or seven major media networks or conglomerates around the world. But each of these networks are still owned and controlled by the small, powerful group of people. So through our media, through our educational systems, through our nonprofit institutions, for example, uh, that are doing a lot of lobbying in Washington, D.C., we are being, being fed an agenda. It's a, an anti-Christian agenda. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is Christianity, specifically the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican and Rome, is a powerful influence that works against their plans and their agenda. So they want to eliminate Christianity around the world. Folks, I'm talking to Ned Darty, wrote the book Flashlight in the Heaven, uh, an interesting book. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, kicked this off in March of 2001. And the visions in their predictions, as you heard in the beginning of the show, almost, almost, almost every one of them, okay, came true. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lasant. My guest, Ned Darty, the author of Fast Lane to Heaven, launched it in March of 2001, and now launching on May 1st, endtimesdaily.com. Let's talk about that, Ned. Well, Sam, I'm very excited about it. It's a project I've been working on for over a year now. Uh, it's going to be a news website uh, with all the bells and whistles that you would find on, uh, for example, Fox News or CNN. Uh, it's going to have an, an area that will have national global news, health and wellness news, which is a very important item in, in these times, and also spiritual news. And uh, I'll be uh, giving commentaries, uh, for example, in National Global News, commentaries for, for people to perhaps understand the truth behind the news that's being reported. All of the news that we get is slanted by people who have a particular agenda that's frankly not in the best interest of not only the people of the United States, but the people globally. You have to understand that these people who are in power and control operate uh, from greed, a sense of greed. And uh, the biggest problem we have in this world right now is greed. Uh, greed has uh, been ruining the world, frankly. And on a spiritual level, God is aware of what's going on. He certainly is. If you remember, we only have, we only have knowledge of one event when Jesus perhaps lost his temper. That's when he threw the money changers out of the temple. And perhaps because he saw what the money changers of today would be doing to his people in this world. And in the End Times Daily, we want to point out what they're about. Uh, Ned, um, there, there is so much to be said. Um, I'd like to uh, invite you to come back on another Sam LaSanne show. But folks, uh, the DVDs, okay, Fast Lane to Heaven, The Dome of Deception, Heaven Help Us, and Healing Cancer, from outside in, folks. Uh, I'm sure you could spend a whole show on, on these, but they're available on the endtimesdaily.com. Ned, I wish you the best and good health to you, and thanks, and hopefully you'll come back on the show again. Thank okay? you, Sam. I'd love to be back. Okay, folks, endtimesdaily.com, uh, or if you want to watch this show 24-7 on ssptv.com. We'll see you next time on The Sam LaSanne Show.